As we know, PlayStation 1 games can be emulated using DuckStation, the PlayStation 1 emulator. And today we're rounding off our ultimate guide to this emulator by answering some of the most frequently asked questions. I'm getting the error MSVCP140 underscore one DLL is missing. Is there a fix? It seems really obvious, but try reinstalling the program. After that, if the error is still appearing, then you're using an older version of Windows. Another way you can fix it is by downloading and installing the latest version of Microsoft Visual Studio, and then try the application again. If that still doesn't work, you could try using an older build of DuckStation and then updating it within the program itself. But do know that DuckStation is compatible with Windows 10 and 11. Anything older and you may run into some issues. I'm getting the error that my game requires a .sbi file. What are these? If you're getting this error, this is a copy protection notification. There's a few links in the video description where you can get the SBI files from. Once downloaded, move the file into the same folder where your game's .bin and .q files are. Then go to relaunch the game and it should be playable. I've mapped my controller, but can I test it before I play a game? Yes, you can. Go to Tools and then Controller Test. Now the first time you click it, you'll be prompted to download a file. It's only a few kilobytes and should take literally seconds, but once this is done, you'll be presented with this screen where you can basically test your control pad. This does act similar to a game. So to leave this screen, press escape on your PC keyboard and then click on close game. Can I set hotkeys? Yes, you can. If you go to settings, controllers and then hotkeys, alternatively just go settings and then straight to hotkeys, both will take you to this menu. Clicking on any of the boxes on the right and then pressing a button on your control pad or your keyboard, we'll see that key set as a hotkey. To reassign a hotkey, just click on the existing hotkey setting and then as the timer counts down, press another key on your keyboard or controller within this time. To remove all of your hotkeys, you can reset the settings, but if you only want to remove one, you can just right mouse click on the box. I made a mistake in game, can I rewind? You can, but you first need to activate it. To do that, go to settings and then emulation. Tick this box to activate the rewind feature. Make sure a rewind hotkey is set. Ideally, if you're using a controller or a gamepad, then have your rewind hotkey set to something on your PC keyboard. This way it won't interfere with your gameplay. I'm playing a game over multiple discs. How do I change them? Changing discs can be done in DuckStation for games with multiple discs. When prompted on screen, you can double click the mouse to bring up the DuckStation menu. From there, go to system and then change disc. Now in the menu that appears, it will list the game and all of the discs. So simply click on the next disc to load that one in. If for whatever reason you don't have that menu, what you can do is go to the same area, system, and then select change disc. But this time, press from file. Find your DuckStation main directory and then go to games and find the games folder. From here, select the next disks folder and then click on the Q file to load it into DuckStation. Of course, only do this when prompted by the game, otherwise you'll experience crashes and you'll need to restart the application. If you click on the game's cover, DuckStation will show when you last played a particular disk. So it is easy to keep track of when you last played it or where you're up to if you've not played for a while. Can I use mods, shaders or the cheat engine? DuckStation has a memory viewer built in, so you won't need any external programs like the cheat engine, and it works in exactly the same way. Make sure a game is running and then go to memory viewer. This will open a box that looks similar to cheat engine, and if you're familiar with that, you'll understand your way around it. You can also add shaders into the games. Activate them by going into settings and then post processing. Tick the box to enable them and then go over to where it says add. Here you'll see a list of reshades and filters. You can add any of these you want simply by clicking on them. 
this will activate them and put them in the main box. Then whenever you load up a game, the reshade will automatically be enabled. But if it's not perfect to how you want it to look, you can click on the reshade and at the bottom of the post-processing box, there'll be adjustment sliders that you can change to make the reshade more to your liking. Doing it the way I've mentioned will change the global settings, meaning that all of the games will be played with these reshades. If you want it to be game specific, right click on the game's cover, go to properties, and then in the window that appears, press post processing. At this point, the menu you see is exactly the same as the global settings one, and the method is exactly the same as well. So these are just some of the questions that have been asked about Duck Station. Hopefully they've been useful to you and you've got some answers. But if you've not and you was looking for something else, there's plenty of guides on the channel within Duck Station, which covers saving memory cards, loading achievements, cheats, and even how to install the application. Just search for the ultimate guide to PlayStation 1 emulation.